Yo, what up guys, Will Clark here. Uh, we are on deconstruction videos of some records. Today I'm going through my record featuring Sage Armstrong, which is called Girl Put In Work, um, out on Abode Records. So, as you can see, the uh, record looks pretty simple. There's about 26 tracks, um, but of the core tracks that like actually feature a lot in the record, there's probably only about 10. Um, which is kind of how I like to write my records, very simple. Uh, but let's start off with uh, the kick and bass, which is kind of always how I write my records. Um, so I'm going to play the kick and bass together. Super simple. Um, but they kind of work together. I, I feel like when you're writing a record, uh, the kick and the bass for me is the main thing um, to start a club record. So I'm going to go through the, the kick with you. Um, this is what it sounds like um, initially with no kind of processing on it. Then I added the Logic Overdrive, um, which you'll hear it just changes up a little bit. It just kind of makes it a little more punchy. Um, there's not, I'm not doing too much to it. Um, just making sure the tone is at 20,000 hertz added the drive to about 2 dB. Doesn't doesn't do much, but if you hear it on and off, it kind of changes it quite a lot. Um, EQ, there was too much low end. So I put an EQ on, which made it just a little bit punchier. Technically, I should have put a compressor on, but I didn't. Um, I'm not too sure why when I did it at the time, but it sounds better without it. Um, so then that goes into the kick and the bass. So the bass is this, um, which I'm actually using massive. Um, bass 115, I don't, uh, one five, I don't even know where this is from. I did this a long time ago. I wrote this record back in 2018. Um, so let's listen to the bass without any processing on. Pretty simple, um, and you'll you'll see it's literally just the B note. Um, it's it's not rocket science. This one, it's pretty simple. And then on the processing, I put some EQ to uh, lower below thirty hertz, um, just so this is purely so your speakers aren't taking up power that you can't hear really um, in clubs if. You, you don't want the low end that you can't hear. These You kind of feel things below here. Um, so it's just wasted energy that takes out speakers, which in the grand scheme of things, when you mix down and master, the less low end that you can't hear, um, it gives you more room to make your, make your records louder and just sound a bit nicer and cleaner. So Decapitator from Sound Toys, this is like one of my favorite distortion units. Um, I'm not actually using much of this. Um, you probably won't even be able to tell the difference if I turn it on or off. It just adds a little bit of grit and a little bit of distortion through it. Again, using the Logic Overdrive, you can see I'm not using too much on this as well, only 1.5 dB. Um, at tone to 20,000 hertz, you can hear it kind of punches things a little bit more. And then the compressor is for the uh, sidechain. So it's actually sidechain to the kick. So you can see it pumping away. Um, I added some 2 dB on this just to kind of add a little bit of volume to it. And then I play that with the kick and it sounds like this. So then from that, I'm gonna go onto, onto the, the drums, which is the hats, the snares, etc., etc. So a lot of my hats I've either sampled from records or just used machine. Um, I use machine a lot. I'm not too sure if I actually have the, no, these don't work. <laughs> Ignore, I'm just gonna close that. So 
so I'm not too sure what these were, but they weren't part of the drums anyway. So I'm going to go into the hat. This is, I'm not too sure where the hat sample's from. Just a simple hat. I've literally done no processing on this. Um, for me, I like to find just samples that you don't necessarily have to process too much. It just makes life easier. I'm kind of lazy when it comes to writing, writing music with the fact is I want to do least possible work on the record. Um, this second hat, you can hear it's quite a muddy sample. So I'm going to take the EQ out and let you, let you hear it. If I add another EQ, you can probably see quite a bit of low end so I've taken that low end out you will never be able to hear that low end it's just going to be really annoying and flapping um, so on this one turn it on you can now hear the difference between it I really dislike high frequencies around 5k um, it's, it's those frequencies that really hurt your ears so I try and turn those down a lot um, and that's all I've got on this on this hat shaker again nothing I probably could have done more work on this there's probably a bit of low end there's not too much low end if I have to pull it up but like really far so pull that back down there's nothing really on this shaker it's just a, a straight up shaker there's not even a swing on this um, so listening to all of those together. You've got that. So I'm gonna move on to this. I'm just gonna move up and down this scale. Um, so this is white noise percussion. So I actually made this uh, using, I'll show you how I made the white noise. So this is through the ES1, I believe, or ES2, let me have a listen. Yeah, so ES1. Um, Bring the calf up, turn the oscillator to that. Let me get my keyboard up so I can mess around with it. And then just move that, move that down to sub. And then you've got got a uh, white noise. Um, pretty simple. Um, so what I did is I created these white noises in that and then bounced them out to audio. I much prefer working with audio. Um, and I've made it into this sound. So by doing that, I've got this black, black mask thing. It's super weird, this... Uh, this plugin, it just changes things really weirdly. I don't actually know what it does. Um, you can do loads of weird things with it and just fuck about with it, really. Um, Factuator is just a really harsh distortion unit. Um, channel EQ, taking out all of the EQ. You can hear it's like, takes out that low end, so I've just kept it super high bit crusher this is from logic um, this is with it out with it doesn't add much it's just like adds a bit more texture really and the Tau reverb which is my favorite plugin um, this is actually free from Tau.com um, I would get this if you if you could it's, it's an amazing amazing one it's with it out kind of adds all the reverb to it. On the reverb, I've actually lowered from four, 410 hertz um, by minus 
two dB, so you're just not getting too much low end. Um, then I'm going to go into the clap um, or snare, whatever you guys want to call it. This is just a sample from. I actually, I actually think this is a sample from a Dents and Pico record. Just their snare. Um, if you listen to it without, you can hear the kick underneath it. Um, so I just EQ the kick out using the Logic EQ, boosted it up around three to six hundred hertz, um, and then added a compressor to it just to tighten it up. So that with the kick, two hats, white noise, and the bass line is. Add in a riser, um, rider, a rider. So that's what it sounds like without any of the processing. I added this, the wave sound shifter, which brings it down, makes it a little bit darker and more like techno ear reverb. This is more so when you're like side chaining to the kick. It doesn't, it still side chains, but you have more of a like a, a tail to the record, to, to the uh, rider. Compressor, which should be side chaining to the kick. See that? So with it, without it side chaining, you can hear it's like, not as pumpy. With side chain, it just adds a little bit more of a groove to it. Echo. Um, it's like very subtle. Um, you can hear the after delay. It's just adds a little bit of movement to the record. It's very like the wet is at thirteen percent, so it's very subtle. Um, and the channel EQ just to take the low ends out. And I boosted down the uh, around the the lower the higher frequencies. Um, just to make it sound a little bit nicer. So here's all the drums together and the bass. So this is a little percussion. Very simple percussive hit. EQ'd out and I've automated the, the wet on the towel reverb. Which I use the towel reverb a lot in a lot of these records. Um, but it's a very simple percussion. So you hear it. So as coming down below, you can hear these sirens coming in. So this was made from a sample, this was made from a VST, which I actually can't remember. Um, but I think it was, yeah, bounce in place, which means BIP. So it says Sirens BIP, which means I've bounced it in place from a VST. Um, I think it was from my, the Tau Juno emulator. With this, it's simple, the gain, is just a tool that I use to automate volume, um, which it just makes it easier for me when I'm mixing down. I don't have to worry about automating the actual volume controller. So I automate the gain. So you can see it comes in quiet, and as it track goes along, the gain will get louder and louder. Um, and again, on the EQ, I've just boosted it around 2K, um, which just pushes it through a little bit more in the track. Um, 
So you'll hear it with the record. It's a pretty simple effect. So a big part of the record is the horn. Um, this is actually from Absinthe. Uh, this synth is insane. I don't don't even ask me how to work it. Um, but this is from the DNB bomber patch. Um, if you listen to it, it's kind of like an evil horn sounding, which is a huge part of the record. It um, it plays a big part. more as a, like a percussive thing really which if you listen to the EQ when the EQ that I've done on it I've taken all the low end out and boosted around 1k you can just hear that low end that it's not needed it would clash with the bass um, and it would just not it wouldn't sound right so that's that one um, and then there is also some effects going on around the record so here if you listen to this one just a crash this one is like a weird horn kind of thing i'm not really too sure what this is but again a lot of these effects are just either eq'd um, and this has got Tau on, uh, Reverb, I use it a lot. So this is a little stab, um, which again has just got EQ and Tau Reverb. It's like another horn, really, um, which it hits every time the, the track drops into something new, um, just to kind of add a little bit more tension um, and then that is pretty much all the drums and everything around around the record, drums and bass. Below, as texture-wise, I've got a white noise loop. That. So this is super interesting, actually. Um, if you hear it with the with the kick in the bass. like adds more percussive it's like a more percussive white noise and how I've done that is using step effects it's kind of weird this thing um, you just go through it's like a step sequencer um, I remember using it and I just would like literally press loads of buttons until something works <laughs> it's nothing too exciting but it has a delay on it so you can hear it taking the delay off, it takes like some of the tails of the white noise off. But if you li actually listen to the white noise by itself, it's just the white noise. Um, so using the step effect, obviously with the channel EQ taking out the low end. It's like a cool groove uh, that adds texture to the record. So the white noise, um, the white noise, the vinyl crackle classic, just to add a bit of texture um, to the to the record. Uh, I put that a lot in my records. Um, this is probably a little bit too loud uh, to what I would put in now, but it seemed to work at the time. So the main thing on the records is Sage Armstrong's vocals. Um, So I'm gonna play them with I'm gonna play them with all the effects and processing I done on them. Let me see you twerk, girl put in work. Let me see you twerk, girl put in work. And then this is what it sounds like without them. Girl Let me see you twerk, girl put in work. So you can probably tell there's not too much difference from what he sent me. 
Um, but I added the micro shift, which is probably my favorite thing to use on vocals. Girl. You'll hear the difference. Let me see you twerk. Girl, put it. Girl. Let me see you twerk. So the micro shift just like spreads it out and kind of adds a little bit of a detune type of vibe to it. Channel EQ, um, taking out the low end, boosting around 1, 1 1.4, 1.5. And the rest is just effects. So the Junior, the Echo Boy Junior from Sound Toys is amazing. Um, just a echo tool. You can see all of the automation that I'm doing through here. So you've got the, the Echo Boy and then also the creative filter, uh, which is just a just a filter from Sonox, Sonoxis. JJP Vocals is something from Wave. Um, I use this a lot on my vocals actually as well. Girl, 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 girl. So if you listen Let without me see it. You girl, put in work. Girl, 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 girl. Let me see you twerk. So it does add like some real nice high textures to it and it's taken out a few lows as well. Um, this is like key in, so these two tools in vocals are key for me. Um, I love them. They make everything sound amazing. So if you're working on vocals, get these babies. Um, an arrangement, it's a very simple arrangement. Um, intro up until 1.30, mini breakdown up until two minutes. Big part of the record here. Let me see you twerk, twerk, girl, girl, girl. Let me see you twerk, girl, put in work. Then it kind of builds up with the rides here. Girl, put in work. You can hear the sirens coming through. So this this whole record for me is about the long breakdown. Um, so you've got a breakdown from 3.05 to it's pretty much a minute long breakdown, um, which in clubs, it, it really works when everyone wants to go crazy and lose their shit. forgot this this comes in at four minutes pretty much and this is using the mini v um, from Atoria I love this too it's great for bass lines as well um, EQ'd out pretty self-explanatory reverb which will be automated as you can see uh, here uh, so you can hear reverb coming out and decapitator um, this has got the punish button on which means it's been smashed through the distortion I it's still there's still not much being sent through so let's see if you can actually notice a full difference with it on with it off so you can hear it just like twinkles the top ends up a little bit more love the word twinkle um, I don't think there's much else to the record. Um, on the master chain, I have my own master chain, which I just use to. Uh, I used to just so I can play it in clubs, but I will generally always go and get it mastered externally from from a master in house just to get a fresh pair of ears um, on the record. So yeah, this is Will Clark and this is my deconstruction of Girl Putting Work featuring Sage Armstrong.